Hey guys, I can't believe what I found when cutting open these engine oil filters. So much so that I had to go back in the store, verify each filter to make sure that the results that I had received were reliable. You'll see me match up each engine oil filter with this computer to show that it's the proper filter for the 2008 Toyota Corolla. Now, what do we found? You'll be excited to see this one guys, and it's not the typical issue such as the ones with the water vapor or oil and puddles inside the Fram oil filters. And this includes all of the lines of Fram filters in this video. But you'll see something more. The Fram Extra Guard states it will carry up to 10,000 miles for engine oil change intervals. You can see the date of the filter and when it was manufactured. So you know these filters weren't on the shelves for 10 years. No, this is made in 2019. Now we have the Fram Ultra Synthetic. You can see that this one claims 20,000 mile oil change intervals. This one was made in 2019 as well. Now the Fram Tough Guard. This is the medium grade filter between the two. Not the best, not the worst. Definitely not the orange can of death. You can see the manufacturing date, 2019, and where it was made. Now we have the K&N filter. This one doesn't really give a lot of reference, except to other Pram filters, Motograph filters, Mobile One, AC Delco, filters this filter actually exchanges with, or interchanges with, to be exact. You can see the, they say their pleats are evenly distributed. Let's take a closer look, guys. I want you to check out this Mobile One filter. Now, it claims it can go up to 20,000 miles or one year. Heavy duty canister with stands nine times the normal system operating pressures. Enhanced nitrile gasket remains pliable to prevent issues. Steel center tube provides added internal strength. Now, the question is what are these guys leaving out? Does someone have something in their filter that they're not showing here? Or quality issues? Well, it won't be your typical run of the mill destroy the filters in the process. We're actually gonna cut them open with an oil filter cutter, cutting tools to be exact. And this will make sure that everything's nice and clean when we open up the filter for a much better comparison as people wanted in previous videos when I used a grinder to absolutely torch them. Here we have the gasket for the K&M, the gasket for the Fram filter. You can see these gaskets side by side. They both appear to be made of the same materials. Now, some gaskets are made of a natural rubber. Some gaskets are made of a really pretty much the same synthetic materials, a little bit more pliable. I can see that the Fram Ultra Synthetic does seem to be a little bit harder, actually a little bit less pliable, but it seems to be made thicker. As I said, these are all for the same vehicle. Now for the Mobile One, you'll see that the only one that really sticks out is the SuperTech filter. Side by side, eh, not really much of a difference as I can tell. Now that's the anti-drain back valve, which the anti-drain back valve will allow you to keep your filter full of oil. This way, when you first start your vehicle up, you'll have oil much faster filling up those places where you don't starve them of lubrication. And as you can see, the inlet holes 13 for the SuperTech and 10 for the Fram. So actually three more inlet holes, which will come back to something a little bit surprising here in a moment. As you can see here, we have the Mobile One, and it has eight inlet holes. It actually has less than all the others. Now the other Fram filter, this one would have 10 inlet holes. And it would appear that all the Fram filters for this vehicle have 10 inlet holes as well. You can check out the K&N filter. It has 13 inlet holes. So does the SuperTech. This is just one common factor that you're gonna notice. So keep that in mind as you go through this video and see the difference. 
because this actually could save you a lot of money and you could get the exact same filter. Well, take a closer look at this base plate. The base plate actually has some really bad scratching on the back and I found out that this can turn into really big quality issues in the future, such as rust building up. You can see the gasket material and you've heard of really bad horror stories. One of the biggest issues is you need to check for your gasket of your oil filter that was on your vehicle before installing the new one to make sure you don't leave it behind and cause a major issue and destroy your engine. Now Fram, their gaskets, for some reason, they come out way too easy. But they're not the only one. As you can see, the K&N one, it comes out pretty easy as well. So what you want to do is make sure the gasket's in there well and check for the old one when installing a new filter, always. Apply a little bit of oil to the gasket and this way it does come off easier when you're removing the filter and it doesn't stick. You can see the mobile one, it's probably one of the best gaskets. I keep trying and trying to get it off, but it's much harder than all the rest. So I will say that this is actually an upgrade, but hey, just keep an eye on it, and this really shouldn't be that big of an issue. But you could forget, it happens to everyone. Now, let's take a look inside these before I pull out the filter media and the rest of the components inside the housing. As you can see, look at that. I've showed you this in other videos, but I mean, it is bad. I mean, that stuff just puddles up in there. These filters. They get dust and debris, and they'll let you know contaminants is one of the biggest factors, actually the biggest factor, when it comes to engine oil changes and issues occurring. Well, you see this, man, the medium quality filter, and then you see the lowest quality filter. The medium quality filter actually didn't really have anything inside of it, not that we could see. The lowest quality one had a big puddle in it as well. Now there's the SuperTech, it's dry just like the rest, except for the two frames had the puddles inside of them. Mobile One uses a piece of stamped steel just like the rest of these filters, but the high quality Wix filter uses a spring like some other filters such as Royal Purple to hold the components from moving around inside. But take a close look at this guys. This would typically be your oil bypass valve. This can keep you from getting your filter clogged up from dirt and debris, and you'll still be able to get oil pressure when you need it the most. But also, when it's really cold outside and extreme cold temperatures, it'll allow the oil to flow through that bypass valve. These have the bypass valves made inside of their stamp still. But the Mobile One, this is the only filter that I've seen with a bypass valve made like that. And really, Check it out for yourself, guys. This could be a major issue because, for one, it barely even wants to open and it takes an extremely high amount of pressure to move it. These aren't so bad. And if you look up the spec, you'll see it shouldn't need that much pressure. And the opening is ridiculously small. I would not want to depend on that filter in extreme cold temperatures. That's for sure. You'll see as I go by opening these filters with no problem at all for the uh, oil bypass valves. And as I said, they do use a stamp piece of steel to hold all the components inside that filter from just moving around, sloshing around, etc., etc. Now, yes, they do use just a piece of plastic, but I haven't ever seen it to be a really big issue so far. Some use steel to hold theirs. Now you can tell by looking at these pleats, they're evenly distributed and you can see they have a steel rib right there on the side that holds them together well. No issues here. It all looks nice and uniform. They look the same. The center tube is also made of steel. The end caps are made of steel for the mobile one. So it's a really good construction aside from that bypass valve, which like I said, can be a major issue in cold temperatures. I really wouldn't want to depend on that filter with such a small issue and such a big issue, depending on where you live. Well, you can see the SuperTech is one of the lowest cost filters. As a matter of fact, it and the Orange Fram Can of Death 
are the lowest cost filters. Now we'll say that the SuperTech filter is actually the lowest cost out of all of them. It has steel center caps. It's nice on the side. The pleats are all nice and uniform. They're all the same. The center tube, however, is plastic, but I've never seen an issue with that. And a matter of fact, I think it's made much better than these cardboard Fram filters. Here's another problem I see. Look at this. All the gunk and debris that builds up on this cardboard and the glue, which can be a major issue with the cardboard. They both do have a steel rib on the side of the pleats, which is actually good, but they look exactly the same. Now, why are you paying more money for this tough guard over the Fram Orange Can of Death when they're made exactly the same? I mean, I can't find one difference between these two filters. So guys, if you can offer any information on the Mobile One filter and the bypass valve and what you think about it, I'd really appreciate it because I haven't really seen a lot of these, but the ones I had seen, well, they're not so great. And you can see right here with this other filter, what a coincidence. We have the K&N filter, and we notice the inlet holes are exact same amount as the SuperTech filter. But you also notice steel end caps uh, has a plastic center tube. Now, what about that? It's awful funny if you ask me. I believe these filters are a lot alike. But I will say that this Fram filter, now this one for the Ultra Synthetic, it is made of really great quality. Except there are a few issues when it comes to quality control at this plant, apparently, because I'm finding issues with the glue. So the glue can be globbed up all over the filter. I will say the pleats are actually nice and uniform. It does have a steel or metal rib that helps to give support, just like some of the other filters. I notice this is becoming more prevalent in filters today, which is a really good thing for filters that aren't made so great. It even has steel wiring on the inside of this Fram Ultra Synthetic that gives it extra support, just like the Wix XP filter. But check out these filters, the SuperTech filter and the K&N. This is what I was talking about. You can even see they have these strange markings on the end caps. The only difference is one's a blue marker and one's a red marker, which I'm not really sure where that'd be an issue. But I about guarantee you that they have the same manufacturer. I wouldn't doubt it one bit. So you're given 10 times more money for this K&N filter, literally. Like you can get a SuperTech filter, a couple of bucks. The K&N filter, you're looking at about anywhere from $15 to $20. The only difference I see is actually, if you look at the K&N filter, it has this weird setting so you can take and put a wire through in case your filter blows off the housing so you don't lose it and it blow in front of somebody's car or motorcycle while you're driving. Now if you'll check out the housings and see how durable they are, uh, seem to be pretty well. They're all made so that you can get an oil filter wrench on them. I will say the frames have the texture on them at the bottom. You can see it's like a black color and it actually gives you for a better grip. Now this is the feature I was talking about that you can hook onto this, but you can also hook on a special filter wrench tool to reach onto that nut there and get that filter off a little bit easier. It gives you an extra option. So that is pretty good. Guys, if there's any recommendations you can give, please do so. And thanks for watching Nate's Interactive Auto.